Oh, where the flip did I put my heat map? There's not many places for that to hide around here. Hmm. Under there? No. Seriously, it's not exactly easy to hide the big iPad heat pad out there it is. Good job sneaking your way under dead MacBooks. Alright. Got a big bag of sarin juice out of the way. That just arrived today. Microphone seems to work. Let's get this iPad sorted out. Let's see, find out solves it. Uh, IEC cable. Why does it seem dark here? Huh, who knows? Maybe it's maybe it's just the feeling of my soul today. Uh, well, okay, let's get this underwear. Now let's see, MacBook Air. Um, not MacBook Air. <laughs> iPad Air, I think that uses the same screen as the 6. iPad 6. I'll find out when I take it off. It's certainly similar enough. What happened to the M1? I haven't had a chance to dig deeper into the M1 yet. I'm sort of trying to come up with a good diagnostic sequence for me to check. I have a feeling it's probably not doing so great. Uh, we'll see. And I still haven't got my new hot air station. And in fact, most things that I'm expecting in the post haven't arrived. However, that's not unexpected given that the COVID postal situation is completely out of control. All right, I've got my, I haven't even got my replacement ones of these yet. And I ordered them a month ago. Something like that. I've actually been busy today with uh, board view stuff, uh, flex board view. Yeah, we had a pretty brutal storm this afternoon. Well, must have been a, pushing up 100 kilometers an hour on the wind easily. It was, uh, it was excitable. Fortunately, not a hailstorm. They're problematic. Just lots of wind and then a moderate amount of rain afterwards. Okay, that's my safety's on. I just realized a bit check that this is, yeah. Check that it's off. So it's not too catastrophic, but it's not great either. It feels like it's almost coming off on its own anyway. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I'll take this any day. Come on, give me some alco. That is very hot. Just discovered that. Oh, 
Alright, that's completely not normal to come off with such ease, but I'm not going to sneeze at it. I'll take that. Any little wins you can get. Hey, Lexi. Come on, don't be like that. Yeah, more than happy to have a nice straightforward, didn't shatter into a million pieces type of repair. I mean, we get enough of the ones that are complete royal pain in the backside, so yeah, I'll gladly take this. The nice thing is, now that I have the air compressor, I am a little less, um, how could you say, a little less fidgety when it comes to putting these screens back down and worrying about dust. The other thing I've noticed is that you can actually get specks of dust in here and people generally, you don't really even see it that much. Okay, I am missing a screw. What the hell has happened here? That screw should not be missing. Where is the screw? And the home button's come off. Right. Interesting. Oh yeah, this has definitely been repaired before, there's no two ways about that. Um, like I said, I'm kind of thankful for it. Because <laughs> it's usually the first time around that is the worst. And after the first time, things are a bit looser and a bit easier to get off. Usually. Not always, but... screen off. Yeah, I don't fret too much about the screens anymore. I just you know, use the compressed air on them and they're fine. Looks interesting that the home button came out there. Uh, okay, we've got a battery pimple here. That's not good. So it's this little mark. Now, I could just ignore that, but I really don't want to. I have a feeling that's something that could come back and bite me. The trouble is I do not have a spare at the moment, so it's very frustrating. Damn it. They develop pretty quickly, those things. Uh, Andrew, I just got a Ozito 3 litre airbrush combo kit. It does the job really well. You know, it's, it's not too much pressure, but it's got enough reserve in it for, to do what I need to do. Alright, how hard is it to get these batteries out? I've actually not done an iPad battery like this one. Is it a case of... Yeah, yeah, what is the trick with these ones? I've done a couple of others, I'm going to imagine it's the same sort of 
drizzle some alcohol down there and then lever it up. Yeah, well. Feel free to advise if I'm about to do the wrong thing. See if we can put Super Spudger into action. Just take it slow, use the MacBook method, alright. Spudges are a little bit big for the job. Feels like the adhesive runs left to right. I hope that wasn't a cable. <laughs> no, that was just the logo on the back. That was a cable on the other hand. Okay, one up. Do that. Now, make sure I don't destroy the main board. I suppose the main board is going to be the hardest bit. The um, screw is out of there. The greater question is, you know, can I just lift it? rely on the inherent flexiness AB blood? No, definitely not an animatronic unless you're thinking of good old Paul Daniels the magician now if he reappeared it would be in some serious strife <laughs> that's called the Ghostbusters Just lift it up and pull the battery out. So easy, Alexi. Oh, it's it's on the damn post, that's right. There's a post under there, isn't there? Yeah. Kind of have to do it this way. Not feeling comfortable. Yeah, I probably just broke the pins on that. I'm kind of worried I just broke, might have broken a pin on that board. Although they do look intact. They're supposed to be three or four. And the answer is three. Okay, so I'm lucky. I was worried that I knocked off another pin here, but it's not. It's it's okay under there. Yeah, that looks okay. Well, we can't really do much with that. 
now that it's out, it's like, well, it look like I got another battery. I guess I'll stick it on the order list though. And I'll see if I've got another one of these screens. So it's a white foot and a leg. A memo? Really? Oh. Richard, what? Well, really? <laughs> Crazy little kittens. So why do I have iPhone XR stuff everywhere? iPad digitizers. Seven eight, seven eight, seven eight. iPad Air, but it's a black. Six white. Let me guess. I don't have any white. Yeah. That's so typical. It would appear I do not have, well, I'll double check anyway. Mini, 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 mini. Jeez, how many minis do I have? Yep, well, it would appear I do not have an air screen or a battery. Wow, I really, really did the pooch that time. What do you want, Murph? What are you doing? Meow. Yeah. Meow. yeah. Meow. What else do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You got more um you got more character in your voice or you just is that your limited note? Okay. Meow. Oh <laughs> what is it? Hmm? What? You want to go in the workshop? Your claws are vicious. Come here. Come on. If you want to go into the workshop, you can only be carried. Yeah. Uh, there you go. See, do you want to help us make a... Alright, time to go outside. Loki, get your snozzle out of here. <sighs> Alright, well, uh, yep, looks, <laughs> that was a bit of a botch up. I thought I had stock of these things, but clearly not again. It's funny because like, I just spent about $2,000 on parts. And you would have thought I'd have kept up, but nope, apparently not. Apparently I'm no good at that. Fair enough. Alright, next job then. So much for that. Let's take the sticker off this one, because I don't want to reveal it, the secrets. <sighs> that was a big fat waste of time doing that iPad. Uh, we've actually had this board in before. It was liquid damaged and I was 
genuinely amazed that it was still alive because the liquid damage was all around and over the CPU uh, regs. However, it has come back at, um, with issues still. Apparently it, rest it won't restart properly. You know, it's just having issues. So I've missed something. Or there's, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just going to have to have a look at it and see what it is that I missed. See how bad my work was. It's actually kind of terrifying that sometimes I'll look back on jobs that I have done and wondered how on earth I let it get out the door. You know, there's been a few and I sort of went, why did I, why did I let it walk out the door in that condition? Did I, what was going on? Because I tried my, like most businesses, try my best to make sure everything is right before I let it go. Oh yeah, I remember this one now, it popped off way for those meshes. Uh, and yet somehow I miss them occasionally. Yes, this is a warranty job, Keith. No inventory control. No, usually my inventory control is that I will, at the end of the week, the start of the week, depending, I will go through all the boxes of the various parts that I have, like for all the iPhones and things like that, and I'll write down a list of, okay, I need this many to make my float on parts and things like that. But the, where the problem is, is with the iPads, is I haven't yet kind of separated them out. Hmm. I wonder if this is just like a dodgy battery or something. Yeah, let's get it out and have a proper look. Peter Ellens, well, one kind of has to because I don't have a boss other than, well, obviously the customer's a boss. But uh, you do have to be a little bit hard on yourself to make sure that you don't start accepting sloppiness. Yeah, Miles, this one kind of needs to take the front of the pile. To be fair, I don't have any other jobs at the moment. I don't know what's happened this week. It's just nothing's turned up. Which means I've been doing software development. <laughs> and my software development's pretty shonky at the moment. I don't know how many of you watch my various posts on the MacBook repair group or on Discord or anything like that. Adding new features without fixing the bugs in the old ones. The leader is the boss. That is quite true. What will happen if I sold SMC without inside program? What? 1502. I don't know what you mean by his inside program. Obviously a language difference here. Completely the wrong screw. I'm also feeling a bit exasperated with the number of jobs that I do manage to get fixed to three quarters of the way and then it's a dud <coughs> so I uh, can't cash in on the completed job status and then I completely lost my mind yesterday afternoon what did I tell you about it? basically yeah, a touch screen laptop and when I installed it, I managed to crack the touch screen again. And I was not happy about that. Everybody who was nobody in the room heard me yelling at it. Hey, Pianov. 
you've been busy? Are you doing another dissertation or something? Are you advancing your academic career or are you busy with new projects? Still a year to go. Oh, okay. All right then. Sorry. For some reason, I thought you'd actually gotten your gotten your doctorate or something already. Oh well, my bad. So I don't yet have to call you Doctor Pionov. Yes, yeah, Steve. I, I do shonky work now. I found it's more profitable. <laughs> you do shonky work and then you run and hope that the people don't find you again. Take those off. They're always such a nuisance. You gotta put them back on, obviously, when you reassemble the machine, but while you're not reassembling it, uh, while you're working on it, keep them off. Okay. So we'll do the usual start from left and go through. From what I remember, this was mostly on the top side, like I said, near the voltage regulators for the CPU. So I'm not sure if a weak battery would cause these sort of failures. Okay, there's a little bit of corrosion remnants left there at the top, just, you know, So the ultrasonic didn't really do the best job on this one. But even still, it's within the realm of tolerable. Yeah, so like that there, that resistor there. Now that I would consider a potential culprit, definitely. So let's remember that it's by the fiducial point. But yeah, it looks like it could have a bad pad under it. And see how that pad looks really dubious? Yeah. Now, Michael Billman, this is a um, full-size beast of a thing. This is an Intel. I'll be very glad, I think, once we're pretty much done with the Intels. There's a little bit of undercutting on some of those pads. Alright, now that's 
Yeah, actually, you know, that's pretty bad. What was I thinking? I've got a bad pad there on the top left. And then that cap is far from great. Alright, yeah, definitely. I wonder if I just... Looks like I clearly just screwed up. Maybe I'll make that the title of this stream. I screwed up. Yeah, 928. If I had to pick a culprit, I'm probably going to say that resistor on the other side. But certainly, that little bit of uh, dodgy region up here between the multiplexer and this um, FDMF chip yeah that needs some rework too Steve I did the ultrasonic cleaning that's why I'm yelling at myself so I don't know maybe I just yeah but that resistor I'm thinking is gonna be a drop off and die it looks clean but the thing is, I didn't re-inspect. Well, it's a... No, it is actually moving a little bit, I think. It's out of focus, though. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at what the what do you call it the um those parts are. <coughs> Pardon me. Actually, get rid of this. This is uh, one of the new features. Um, Pionov is going to go. Hey, I've already done that. Um, obviously, this is way out of scale and alignment. Top. Oh, um, yeah, it's it's just basically an image underlay. As you can see, I've got to deal with scaling and alignment, and it's not um, too easy because there's a certain degree of non-linearities. Even with um, a flatbed scanner, there can be quirks. Like the one with the flatbed scanner, when you put the board in, let's see, was it this side here? it pushes the board up so therefore it effectively has a perspective effect on the height of the board so this section of the board here will be very fractionally narrower than what it will be seen at this section of the board and these parts are in such a way that you know, the precision or the placement um, you know, the placement precision that you will notice that perspective distortion yeah any tips for TV view I've got nothing on TV view at the moment I haven't um, I've got nothing I haven't had time to work on it I've had a couple of people looking around for stuff but so far no one's come up with a, a actual specification for it anyway all right let's uh so this is a nine what 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 a nine two eight I think it was Nine two eight. Oh, that's just effed up. 
Clearly I have some bugs. I know why that was happening there, but it's irrelevant. Crikey, where did that park, where did that resistor go? Oh, there it is. You can't see it, but I can. It's up here. One, two, three, it's this one here. UPC, UPC, what's UPC? USB-C mm. no, well. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how critical that function is, but we will dive in and fix that up And that's interesting, that's actually a 15 ohm resistor. Pernov, you used um, the STB image thing, didn't you, for when you're doing your um, board image underlay on open board view I'm pretty sure you used STB yeah that just came right off, okay Right now I'm trying to find a program that will make it easy for me to do the image alignment. So like if I pick out four key points on the image and four key points on the board view itself and then have a piece of software that will warp the scanned image back to suit, you know, to align those particular points. If I can find something that does that really easily then it makes my job for creating the top and bottom images for these boards a lot easier because right now I'm doing it by hand and even with the parameters I have for adjusting the offset and scale it's not enough you need to also be able to have a rotate but the trouble is once you start tweaking with those values it, you can sort of very quickly uh, very quickly sort of go down a rabbit hole of many different sort of rotations by transpositions by scalings you know overlaid on each other and it'd just be easier if you just have some program work out what the transformation matrix is matrix is and just applies it once mesh room hmm, okay Alright, so I've got to find a 15 ohm resistor. I think that's a 201. Tim, are you a 201? You're a 201. Good job. 15 ohms. Hmm. Yeah, I was pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it peeling off. There was a couple of quirks in getting it to work with the CMake system, but it was more just my setup, not, not really anything with STB. Aha, uh -huh, 15 ohms. A uh, lucky day. I'm very happy to see that it was released under a very public license, or very open license, rather than toxicity of GPL. I'll have a look at that mesh room later. I 
I mean, it's a fairly common process because yeah, it's basically mapping from one coordinate set to another coordinate set. I suppose you could do it using texture trans. Yeah, if I just simply you know, pick those four points and then interpolate uh, just linearly it should be enough that as a texture then it should work but I haven't quite got around to doing that I'm still trying to work out like I said I'm trying to not reinvent the wheel every damn day because it feels like that I'm doing that sometimes yeah and half the time it's because I you just don't know that someone else has reinvented it occasionally you get great great bit of luck and like in the case of STB image along with the other STB tools they were done, they've done very nicely it was easy to implement you know, there's no great dramas or anything like that and best of all, it worked cross-platform so STL2 image, I use STBL, STL2 image with my infrared program but um, yeah I think STB is definitely a lot easier just the way it straight away converts it into a texture and you're done yeah yeah with the image processing I agree I mean I want to do that outside of whatever you know outside of flexible view open board view because I just want to add those top and bottom images into the open board data so we can have the high resolution image for both sides ready in the database for everybody to use the only thing I found with the camera related distortion correction tools is that they're based on the principle primarily that you're going to either have um, barreling or pin cushioning they don't really have something for dealing with what we're dealing with here where you've got more rotational alignment and a very small amount of perspective I mean I can I can scan those boards within about one tenth of a degree of straight but even that you know, it's, uh, it takes a bit of work and even that though is still not good enough across the span of the board like on a 165, 34, 37 the test pads will go out of alignment the, the, the vector one will be up here or the board view one and then the image will be down here and you know it's not horribly bad but it'd be nice to just get it done right get it done once All right, let's have a look at this cluster job here. That is secured in there. Maybe that is okay, but I'm going to clean it up and have a better look. I'm not 100% convinced. Okay, I, mean, I really don't trust this cat. It's it's giving me some level of concern. But the trouble is it's a real pain in the butt cat to replace. It's in a very inappropriate location. Rotation is easy to fix, but we can only get fixed from cameras, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, in your case, if you can only get them from cameras, that's a problem. See, I've got a. I took the images from um, my Epson flatbed scanner, which uses a sensor that allows you to get depth. So I'm quite happy with uh, the quality it gives. If we go back to that 165 board. Like, this is 1200 dpi. So you can get in, you know, fairly close. They could do it with a little bit of sharpening up. The 
little bit of sharpening and a little bit of brightening. Uh, but 1200 DPI is about as far as you want to go. Yeah, these ones are really dodgy scans. I think I did them in a hurry or forgot to clean the platen. Anyway. Yeah, Pernov, I tend to agree with you. It is a bit more of a bling bling feature than it is an actual functional feature. I'm very much of the same mindset. It's one of those things that people ask for, but when you deliver it, it's like it doesn't really get used that much. And so you put in a fair bit of work and then you're sort of like, well, hmm. Who's going to use it? Who's using it? No, uh, no, we just found we better off just we got used to the circuit board. We knew where everything was after that, and that's usually how it goes. It's often the features you don't think twice about that you add in that end up being the ones that everybody likes. I should probably really be using a yeah, I'm gonna switch tips. Standard flatbed's a pain. Standard flatbed won't do a good job at all. But if you get the ones with the um, CCD sensor rather than the CIS, because most of them are CIS sensors, and as soon as you get half a millimeter away from the board or the depth, they just they go black or they go way out of you just can't use them but with the CCD ones like the Epson V370 it does a pretty good job just my example scan images there sucks that's all but it is one of those things that yeah it's it probably turns out to be more of a selling point than an actual used feature I'm just going to have to go full, full, full 60 on this. Not happy about that. Like I said, this is always going to be a difficult one to get out. And I don't want to go ripping at it. You go ripping at this, and you'll regret it. Behold, it's a 2.225 volt. Gee, shock horror. We've been having a real run of those. 402. Now, the, the 50 volt ones I got from the 0244, the 25 volt ones I got from the iPhone 6s. Yeah. Got any left on this one? No, nope. used them both up on this board. Let's try another one. Yeah, we've got two here. Make sure this isn't a six plus board. Have I taken anything off this or is this a working board? That's the other fun thing is sometimes I have to be careful I don't start stripping parts from a working board that I just haven't 
put into use. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to attack that one. That's a 6 plus board that might be useful. That's okay, I've got plenty of others. Oh, no one can see. Why didn't anyone tell me? Well, it's missing the baseband CPU, so I think we're going to be good. I'm just going to double check that indeed was what I think it was. Yep, 2.225. Okay, all good. Uh, Samuel Rabolo, the main reason is it doesn't really improve things that much. Like it doesn't really save you that much heat absorption. The other thing is that the metal ones do tend to grip a bit better and also they're more durable for the sort of trash behavior that we subject them to. Whereas the ceramic ones are very predisposed towards chipping and they're damned expensive. <laughs> Oh, yes we do. Hang on, I've just about finished soldering this piece. Okay, yep, yeah, what? Oh, Mo, why you got such a sulky face? <laughs> uh, I let him in here before. He's just been a sulky sulk. Yes, you've been a sulky sulk. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think yeah, you're right technically in the sense that they will not take as much heat out of the system, but practically it tends not to be that much of a problem. I'm just pushing on the side of those to see if they pivot off. If they pivot off then they need replacing. I might replace this one too, it's sort of, you know, it's got a bit of junk on it. And lo and behold, it's another 2.2 Uh, just Momo, we call him Momo, but his, his name's Milo. He uh, is getting rather demanding lately for me. I mean, it's cute and everything. It's a little painful though at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're trying to sleep and he's going around the house going, wah, 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 wah. and just, yeah, it's like, Milo. Shut up. <laughs> He's got a brother to play with, and a mother. And everyone else. But nope, he wants me awake. He wants me awake and he wants me to play with him. It's like I'm just not built for that kind of stamina. Yeah, Steve B. Yeah, you, it is funny how you get the big talkers and then you get the side. Yeah, there's so many different varieties. People who say that they're all the same or they've got no personalities clearly haven't spent five seconds even remotely looking at the behaviours of them. I mean, geez, even praying mantis have behaviours, you know, personalities. Even the little jumping spiders do. They've all got personalities. 
you just gotta look for it. Ah, that's uh, blowing hot air onto my fingertips wasn't a smart move then. Does yours walk around at 3 o'clock in the morning, six skills? Keeping you up? That one's okay, it's not showing any orange chip off. It's okay. Yeah, I'm going to replace both of those. Wow, Paul, you really effed up on this job. This is also the trouble when your workshop gets a little bit too full, uh, like your queue you start to push jobs out that they test okay but you, you, know, you haven't really given them a proper second expect, inspection so you send them out because they tested okay and then every now and then you'll get something like this that comes back to remind you that you need to be a little more vigilant about your post repair process Yeah, oh, Steve K, it's probably like that. Yeah. <laughs> Those caps weren't super essential. They're basically just high frequency snubbers. Well, not snubbers, but they're just high frequency response caps. It satisfies. Usually just to satisfy emissions requirements, sometimes for stability requirements. Alright, so one of them is a three picofarad, and the other is a twelve picofarad. Yeah. Now, you could technically leave those off, but we are going to put them back on. It's just a bit comical that we're doing it this way. Alright. Search fine. I, I don't usually have stock of any of the small pickup arrow two oh ones. I almost feel cheated when I buy little capacitors like that. It's like man I'm only getting like two or three pickup arrows of capacitance for all that money I'm spending. I can get a whole microfarad for two cents more. Four point seven twenty five volts is not even yeah. Two twenty nanofarad, ten nanofarad, one microfarad. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull them from another board. I'd say iPhone six is gonna have them. So what do we want? Twelve pick a farad, two oh one not two oh one, twenty five volts, two oh one. See now, like, this part find feature was not something that I planned as a big feature. It was more something to help me just through the day, trying to, because I didn't have enough donor boards. Like, someone like Lewis Rossman has donor boards coming out of his ears. I didn't have so many donor boards, so I needed a way of quickly finding parts. So I put in the part find feature, and now it's a feature that a lot of people really like. So how popular a feature becomes generally has got nothing to do with what you think originally. Zero ohm resistors, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just useless things. <laughs> or, say, like, 10 mega ohm resistors and stuff. Why don't you just leave an air gap? Okay, so six 
So the six stars have them, which is no great surprise. Let's see, 417RF, 417RF. I still haven't set things up right here. Let's see, 417 Oh, that's down at the evil side of the iPhone. Can't pick and place a blob of solder. Quite right you are, yes. I mean, yeah, clearly I understand the purpose of them, but at times you just feel like... You feel like, why am I paying for this piece of air? Or this piece of solder. Um, let's see. You gotta be careful with the picking parts out of the iPhones like this because often. Okay, it looks like this is no stuff anyway. And it clearly says no stuff on the screen. Alright, so we're gonna have to manually search now. Damn it. Let's we'll do 12 picofarad. 01005, no. 16 volt, not high enough. Not high enough. 25 volt, okay, here we go, we might have this one. Right. Oh, you're out on the wing. Cool. Out over here. Yeah, so that's it there. And of course the thing I really hate about these is it's very hard to clearly measure what the values are on these. Especially when you're going down at 12 pickup arrow range, it's, yeah, it's, it's not a lot of your multimeter leads probably have more influence on it than what it is. Oh, for goodness sake, get off. <clears throat> is there an, I just want to see if there's another one around that I can take off. Oh wait, no, what do we want? We want three pickup power next. Three pickup power. Not 33. This is why you have left align match. 0.3 pickup power? Seriously, 0.3? 300. What's below pickup? Fermento? Yeah, take a hike, buddy. Now we do need to put this back in the right place in the rare event that someone happens to need to change it. They want to make sure they got the right one. Okay, so this here will be the 12. Hey, 10 minute tick. Yeah, if there is one area that I think that the board image overlay or underlay really as it is would be useful is when you are trying to show people things on a video stream and you know it gives them that visual correlation. So it can be useful in that respect. Alright, search. 
No, not that. Search, find. So we're on three pickup arrow. I don't know who's going to have this. It might be on some MacBook boards rather than iPhone boards. Yeah, not surprised that it wasn't on the iPhones. Search. It might be list. Ah, stop. I know why. 3.0. Try that. This will cycle through the iPhones as well because the iPhones are a subfolder of the Apple folder. Mini 2. I've actually got a couple of those around. A 49.24. I'm kind of half thinking that might be an accidental overlap. Yeah, here we go. The phones actually do have them. <laughs> Interesting, it's more seems to be on the older iPhones, the 4 and the 5. That's curious. Yeah, Miles, it, you know, it, it will help some people. I know for myself they will be more of a, perhaps a little bit more of a slowdown, inconvenience than a feature. That's, yeah, if it helps 25% of people, then I suppose I should be happy about that. Okay, 4924, are you a legitimate, oh you are a legitimate part, wow, okay. I thought you were going to be just a fake cluster of something. Yeah, because sometimes you do get an overlap between parts on the schematic and it makes you think that you've got a hit, but really it's more of a, a mishmash between two separate sections. But, no, in this case it was legit. Assuming we've actually... Okay, there... And, oh, you've got to be kidding me, you're in no stuff. That's right where it's supposed to be. I don't know if that's a no stuff or that's a Paul stuffed it. Because it, it doesn't have no stuff written on the top. Yeah, it appears it's a no stuff. It's a different board, but that same section there, it's not present. When I say different board, I mean that was a 3476 or something like that. I, don't know, I didn't look at it. I'm not one of these genius people that can look at a board and go, Oh, I know what that is. Yes, that's a such and such and such and such board. For me, it's a case of I have no clue what you are. I'm going to check. There is a distinct absence of 4924s in my set. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Yeah, Miles. I'm not sure, that's why I'm checking on another board. Because yeah, I thought they looked like they were just being soldered over. Yeah, okay, look, another one gone here. Three pickup arrows being nabbed. 
and all those caps. It's kind of weird. Okay, so the 4924 is a dud. 163, I really don't have a 163. Um, a 4S, I might have. C36 RF. Alright, way down the bottom there. Okay. I'm just by my container of four S's. I just realized I have forgotten visually how to tell the difference between the 4S and the 4. Uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure these are the 4S's. Ah, damn it, that part's under a shield. Is there no end to the drama this thing causes me? Okay, that's under a shield, so let's try the five. All this for a measly three pick of power that's not even gonna know. Five S. And that's a no stuff. Hey Mundo. This must be try one six three. Yeah, alright. I think I've got a one six three. I might have just one instance of it, but the trouble is I have a feeling I've actually got all the others, like the one three eight, four twenty six. Things like that, I don't know if I really have a 163. Let's see, 3662. Oh, wait, yep, 163. Jeez. Much luck. Alright. Where was that located? up here somewhere and I think that's it there it looks like it's had a bit of a scrape but we'll try our luck thank you very much Amanda thank you very much for the 199 that's a solid cup of coffee for me I'm gonna need that this weekend I'm gonna take my mother into Townsville to catch a train been a bit of a eventful week I finally sold the house out of Ravenswood which yeah that's where my parents lived obviously until my father passed away and um, so you know now that's all closed and squared off someone else now owns it so it's it's a bit of a ending of a chapter uh, so as you can imagine, my mother's having a bit of mixed emotions about all this. But she's going to go on a trip. And hopefully she'll feel a little bit, a bit better after all this. But uh, getting, getting the old house sold, that was a big thing. Because it's in an area, what is basically a ghost town. 
So it's not exactly like you've got buyers lining up left, right and centre. Hey JBV. Ah, I see you've turned up. Alright, I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's right, yeah, you were doing the zero, um, zero and resistors as a substitute for situations when you didn't have a much needed fuse on hand, I remember that. I don't really remember many people's stuff, but yeah, that one I did. Okay, well, with this board, there's probably not a lot more I can do. I think we're... Well, we'll have another look over it. But I think we'll put it through testing and then we will ultrasonic again. And then <laughs> hopefully this time it will survive substantially better. Yeah, there's a couple of caps and bits and pieces with a little bit of corrosion damage on it, but like I said, they're not to the point where you would have to replace them. But certainly that one resistor, that was a, um, that was a problem. Okay. Get these poor vampire victim boards out of the way. Stick the other boards back into the oops storage. I don't think. Well, I suppose we should just check that it picks up 20 volts. That'd be fairly daft of me if I didn't. I do wonder with that one resistor that was missing. Was it purely by chance for the fact? I think that was specific to a given port. And maybe it was just purely by chance that I tested everything on a different port, which didn't have that resistor problem on it. So that was that one up here. Yeah. So I would, by habit, be testing. Uh, let's see. No, oh, no, actually, no, by habit, actually, I would be testing this side. But it might have been a case of I plugged into a different port and I never got to detect that that issue was present on that port. This is the downside with this USB-C configuration stuff is you can, you, you basically eight different configurations that you have to test for power. Yeah, Greg, you're right. It's uh, Unfortunately, we got that part of it sorted out pretty quickly, thanks to a lot of help from other people. It kind of helps if I turn on power too, by the way. But then, you know, once the place was empty, just simply getting it sold was uh, you know, a nightmare. We didn't get a lot of money for it. Oh, no, do not tell me you're resetting that port. The other problem with testing is sometimes you're not sure whether it's your tester got a bit of junk in the port or whether it was a legitimate issue on the port. Uh, Miles, that's tough when you can't have, you know, you can't get people to deal with that situation. And the worst thing is that many a time uh, they sort of come to the realisation that that's what they should have been doing when it's too late. It's just human nature. I mean, we all... It's not like we're expecting to die tomorrow in most cases for most people. So we put off things like that. It's like, why wouldn't we? And then when it's too late, it's too late. You, know, you can't get the stuff done because you're not well enough to get out there and do it. Stuff going. I think that might have been just a bad connection, but it will be something I'll test. It seems to be consistent here, it's not restarting it. Ok, 
Okay, so for 903, it's a 98 board. Did I break something already? I think I've broken my database program preferences oh, job preferences ah that's why Three. I gotta work out the terms I'm using here. I've got board name and reference. I really should clarify what I want from that. Uh, warranty job. Originally liquid damaged. Written. Hey, I crafts. Hey, Jimbo. Okay, job. All right, so I just want to go through and mark off the parts that I did stuff to. So, like this one here. Place the item. was that other one that was over here all right so that lets me know what I did on that job so that I've got it for the future reference so I can have a look at the job summary and you can see it's got all the information there and then I can copy that to the clipboard and send it over to my invoicing system if I want later okay all right so that one's done and like I said, we'll clean that up and test it out tomorrow. Ooh. I need to get tackled ASAP which is pretty much everything under here ah, why do you not have a motherboard or a bottom plate you scare me you got puppy cells you ah I know why <laughs> yeah all right scared myself for a minute there thought I had a board that had no home I mean, a, a chassis that was missing its board. I was like, oh, I'm in big trouble now. What else have I got here? 
Okay, black coffee, that one I'm waiting on an answer from, I can't fix it. So I want to see if they're interested in selling it for parts or, you know, it's, it's basically, it's a dead end situation. I wish I could give a better outcome on it, but I've spent already three or four weeks on it and you know, I'm just not making any progress. Well, let's see. Um, does not draw any power, no fan spin or chipmunk lights, 931. I think we worked on 931 the other night. But I'm going to have another look at this one, just in case. M1 status hasn't changed, no. I need to get some more information on the boot sequences and things like that, and I need to throw it into open board data so that I can you know, sit down here and go through all the probes. Marbles, I'm not playing marbles, not after Squid Game, no thank you. Okay, 20 volts, scratch my nose, 150, 160, 150, 180, 200, 300. Oh, this is the one I think that, yeah, it doesn't behave right. Something's very odd happening with it. It just sort of keeps cycling around the 200, 300. It comes back up to 300 and then falls back down to 150 and then 50 and then cycles again. Yeah, something's very weird going on with this. I think this is the one we we're not even getting any CPU voltage. Was it fifteen ninety eight? Is it or nineteen fifty eight? Uh, that's right, this is all backlight damage. That's right, yeah, this is backlight damage. And we fixed up all the backlight area, only to find that we basically had no life. And that was extremely frustrating because we thought, yay, yeah, the whole, see, this whole backlight section is unpopulated. I have a feeling though that the problem might be up around this area and the fact that it may be a part that I thought was part of the backlight area but in fact is actually something else. What I'm a little disappointed by here is how bad I've left it the flux. Hmm, I've got a cough.
There's a. No, I don't know if, uh, I don't know what happened then. Well, I can't hear things normally, as in under normal circumstances I cannot hear things very well. But I swear I heard what I initially thought was bats fighting, uh, fox bats or fruit bats in the trees. And then I thought there was a bit of a cat element in this, and yeah, because cats fighting and bats fighting spelt almost the same and they sound almost the same but uh, Elita didn't hear anything and she's got vastly superior ears to me but then when we were out discussing it she thought she heard something coming off the transmitter in my pocket here but it was off so that was truly bizarre very bizarre Anyway, as I was trying to say, is I'm wondering whether you know, some of these parts that are ripped off might have had something to do with something other than the backlight. Mind you, these are they're pretty damn shonky parts already. I kind of doubt it, because it really does just look like keyboard backlight on the other sides. LCD backlight. It was very weird. Sort of stuff that keeps you up late at night. Okay, so we've got some nasty corrosion down here. It's not very big, and it doesn't look like it's going to have really caused any damage. It's the sort of thing that will get washed out in the ultrasonic, and that will be the last of it. And you can see obviously uh, the coffee or whatever it was ran over this, but again, the, it's underfilled, so that's a good start. <coughs> but yeah, everything else seems perfectly okay. The ISO looks fine. Is it windy there? It's not at the moment, no. It certainly was this afternoon. But right now, no, it's quite calm. What the? Okay, try to remember what this was for. This was where the backlight melted through. That's right, I remember that now. And we decided, I believe it was a zero ohm resistor or something like that. Anyway, we'll, we'll just remove that. I think I actually put a piece of wire in there. I did indeed. Okay, that's deliberately... <laughs> deliberately being being held together there. At least I believe so. Yeah, okay, so it was this inductor here. And we just decided to go 
from that pad and rather than go there we went just straight up to wherever there was I do wonder though is there continuity here between this pad okay there isn't and that could be critical because there might be something going off elsewhere from there one way uh, yeah but Oh, it was. How bad? Like, he seems to be okay, but I haven't had a close look. Okay. He's still in. I, I let Tabby out, but. But Simba's still Simba's in there. Simba's still in the, the gate. Yeah. Between the front and yeah. the rear, and then I've, I've left it chopped open. Okay. So Don't let anyone out. I'm going to bed. Now. Okay. Well, it seems like we actually did hear something. I'm going to test diode mode on this pad. It's registering open circuit. Point four. So chances are that yeah, nothing is connected to that. As long as we get continuity between here and here, I think. Okay, interesting. We're not. Okay, that's interesting. We actually got an open circuit there. I'm not supposed to get that. So on here we have point four. On here we've got it open. What about here? Open. Okay, so our little connection isn't even making it. Okay, we're gonna have to have a look at that. Unfortunately, this is not really probably going to be the reason why the machine isn't coming up properly. This is something that would be entirely much later on. Oh, that's right. I remember now. It fused itself as a solid lump of iron basically hey asking all right so there's continuity between there and there and we just actually need to Right, we need the filter, that's what we need. <sighs> okay, search for this part. 120 ohm, 15 ohm, 402. <sighs> Come on, find me a replacement. Ugh, iPad. I should just get rid of the iPad files because I don't have iPad boards. I certainly don't have a 2249 or a 2784, that's prehistoric stuff. Triple three O and whatever I do have. Twenty nine fourteen I certainly do.
All right, let's have a look at triple three O. See if it's a legit match. I don't know what it's trying to match there, but it certainly wasn't it. Now, unfortunately, that's a three amp one. Here we go. Right, triple three O board. Great. Not exactly the most common board for me to have around. Uh, they're good boards. Unfortunately, I have noticed they're starting to fail now too. Sort of like a bit of, they've come to the end of the good life as it were. Oh, seriously? Seriously. Of all the parts I want, and of all the random boards I pick, I get one that has the part I need, and it is destroyed. What are the chances? Alright, let's try another triple three O then. Well, it looks like that one's okay. The reason why I didn't really bother with putting this part across before is because we don't even have a display connected and so it's not going to play a part with the activity. You just realise we have obviously a sensitive, sensitive board level connector there. I don't really want that getting toasty. And thankfully we didn't melt it. Like I said, I really don't think that has anything whatsoever to do with the startup issues that we're encountering. Probably going to have to finish up soon. Since the leader has gone to sleep, I really need to be out in the general area of the house. Just, you know, keeping an ear out. I feel like I want to put this board through the ultrasonic. No. I saw the areas I think, oh look there's damage, it just it comes back to backlight. It's like, no, that's backlight. It's not gonna play a part. The screen's not even connected, so it's not even it's not even gonna activate that section. There is a bit of damage in there, but again, I don't think that's going to play a part. Have you ever replaced those USB-C connectors? Yes, I have actually. I've done it a few times. I know some people say to actually separate them, take the metal casing, yeah, you know, the outer metal part off. I don't find you need to do that. Just be patient with a medium amount of heat and air. 
and they will as long as your solder pads are all fairly even and you've got a fair amount of flux then those connectors will sit back down quite okay you don't need to pull the metal out of shield often or at least I haven't found I needed to I've had to replace a few because I've done stupid things like on the other side of this board so heating up the other side of this board while this connector was still on and it just the weight of the connector just pulls the um, board side connector right off and then you're like whoops and you know you got yourself a new job to try out I go damn it where was that part that I was about to oh that's a pain I was about to test something Hey, Fafo, been watching the Lenovo stream. Ah, uh, yeah, at least that was a fix. The person's very happy with that now. Geez, you can't do a continuity test with your probes are all gummed up. That part just lifted up. Again, not really something that I would say is capable of inhibiting the machine starting up. I think that's probably something more of the speaker amp. This here. Tip's too big. And not enough flux. And no fume extractor. I'll just double check what that part's for. Yeah, it looks like we got a. Is this a mismatch? I don't think this is a 1598, is it? Because this area here does not match what I'm looking at. Not even close. To give you an idea, 
Yeah, that's that's not even close. This can't be a 1598. Okay, so what board have I got? Is this like a 1987 or something? Yep, 1987. And suddenly everything matches. <laughs> 10 microfarad, 10 volt. Uh, hey, micromage. And what's the actual battery connector? Oh, 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 this is actually 3v3 G3 hot. Alright, that's a little more important than what I... Yeah, okay, my bad. For some reason I thought that was just a speaker amp. That was a rather bad oversight on my behalf. Yeah, bad one. So if we are getting a proper 3v3 out of that. One point eight. That seems a little off. Unless it's meant to be, no, three B three. Maybe we should be having three point three volts, not one point eight. Oh yeah, we've got three point three. I'll just realise that test pad there is not is actually this here, which is Bluetooth SPI something. My bad, that wasn't looking clearly. Alright, so we do actually have 3v3. See how steady it is. 330. That seems pretty steady, really. Now, uh, Firefan, yeah, everything's skyrocketed disastrously unfortunately I got in and tried to buy as much stock as I could with some things but I dare say we're going to see 50% you know, gain on a lot of stuff somewhat inevitable I'm afraid I'm getting error 1 when loading schematic with a flex builder. Studio 54, are you loading the board file or the PDF file? You should be loading the board file and the PDF should just be auto magically loaded if you've set up the file directories in a convenient way. As a rule, I like to have a folder for each board. And in that folder, you have the BRD file and then you have the PDF file and that way as more files are generated things like the open board data queue and the top and bottom images and all that sort of stuff as that all gets added it keeps it all contained nicely within yeah that one folder so you can always zip that folder up and share it around or whatever and it's all a convenient package Okay, um, so which studio fit for which board are you trying to load? I'm wondering if 
some nasty voltage didn't get to the CPU on this thing. Open line, oh, I was going to say, 4.8, 4 4 16, 4 .3. the CPU resistances seem normal. One six five and some others, and you get so you load the BRD file. You just go file open, and then the BRD file, and it gives you error one. Are you on Windows? If you're on Windows, there should be a file called flexbv.log, and each time you run that, that gets overwritten and uh, has the running log of the you know of whatever's going on. So we're not even getting to CPU startup. Damn it, Pedro, your useless information there. Not an iPhone 12, they've, they've got yeah, their own unique feature, they've got a slanty, slanty camera set up. It's unique. Okay, you ain't got nothing on that one. Where'd you go? One V8 awake. Let's see if that goes and disappears on us. Seems to be stable. Yep. 
Hey, not some prep. What you up to? Two. Pretty sure I've been through all this. For some reason, I do not have PMU VDD enabled. Where do you come from? Where do you go? PMU enable your whatever. PMIC you. Oh well, that's just that's just flipping glorious. Yeah. We got a PMIC under here. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to peel this off and see what glorious things I completely missed the first seven hours. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of pulling off these things. Because usually they do a pretty damn good job of protecting. You got it, it's a fully shielded unit. Yeah, okay, that's not coming off. I have extreme doubts that anything got in there. <sighs> Come on, man, looking for something obvious. 20 volts bouncing around, trying to get started. Kitten is on your shoulder watching. Cool. Hello, kitten. Like I said, well, that's not a good part to have floating around. That just got clean knocked off. I'm guessing they came from one of the donor boards. Looks far too brutally damaged to be anything that I've done on this one. Yeah, I think we'll throw this through the ultrasonic tomorrow see how its behavior changes but I have a feeling that with the colossal amount of damage we had up here and the fact that it did a really good number on destroying the tracks here with the backlight then the CPU is likely severely damaged in one area or another or something is severely damaged Because it is trying. Yeah, they look really nasty. What do you guys belong to? Who's your group? This is probably going to beep anyway. Because it is a rail that is fairly short. So let's switch over to resistance mode. Half a meg, it thinks. I don't think so. You were just complaining that you were. In yeah, okay. Alright, uh, no, I think it's time for me to kick off. It's almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, well. So we didn't really make a lot of progress, but I think it's gotten dirty to the point where if we ultrasonic clean it, we might find something. Kind of like we did with that other board. 
Although I should have done that check after I did it rather than sending it back without realizing I hadn't checked. So, okay, I'm out of here. Thanks all for watching. So we didn't have spectacular successes this evening. Instead, it was just typical drudgery. Normal day in the tech workshop. See you all next time. You take care.